Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2023 Toyota Tundra Capstone. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Other luxury trucks have limited trims or platinums. The Tundra also happens to have a limited and a platinum trim, but this is the top brass, the capstone, the creme de la creme of luxury trucks. At least it sounds that way. Today, let's find out if this truck lives up to that name. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Sioka Toyota of Williamsport, Pennsylvania for allowing me to borrow this vehicle to review. For all your Toyota needs in the Williamsport area, I'll provide a link to their website in the description below. Starting out up front on this new Tundra, you're gonna get full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and LED turn signals. And then moving into the grill, the lower portion of the front fascia right here, you'll get LED fog lights. You also get parking sensors down here and a sensor and camera incorporated into the gigantic chrome grill for the Toyota Safety Sense technology that this truck is equipped with. And then your Toyota badge is highlighted blue because this truck is equipped with the larger Toyota iForce Max hybrid engine. Originally, when they unveiled this truck, it was very divisive. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people loved it. Others said it looked like a largemouth bass with its mouth open. Okay, I'll admit it was me. I was the one that said that. <laughs> but this truck definitely has grown on me the more I've seen it around in the real world. Moving underneath the hood on this capstone, it's powered by Toyota's new top-of-the-line engine for the Tundra, the iForce Max, which is a hybrid twin-turbo V6, making 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. And that is paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Moving to the profile of the new capstone, starting here with the wheels and tires, you'll get 265 50R Bridgestones around these crazy 22-inch wheels. Now, a lot of the competitors in the segment also have wild 22-inch wheel designs. Another thing a lot of the competitors in the segment have are mirrors that would probably cost close to $1,000 to replace if they were damaged. Yeah, I know that's a bulky name. I'm workshopping it. Let me explain what I mean. There is a lot of functionality built into this mirror. For starters, you have a turn signal indicator right there. You also have a camera for the 360 degree camera system. They are power adjusting with blind spot monitoring and they are power folding as well. As you can see, they fold right back in. That was actually perfectly timed. I just unlocked the truck and I didn't do anything. So the truck relocked itself uh, automatically, which I think is neat. So there's a lot there and I can't imagine that it would be cheap to replace one of these if you got it knocked off in the city. Though the good benefit is they do fold in. So that is very cool. Moving here to the door handle, it is chrome with keyless entry. So if I have the key in my pocket, I can just tap uh, or put my hand back there rather and that will uh, unlock the vehicle and the mirrors will fold out to kind of signal that and then I tap right here that will lock the vehicle and then the mirrors will fold back in that's very convenient very useful uh, not something I believe we've seen on the Tundra before speaking of things you haven't seen on the Tundra before if we unlock this there are power running boards what in the world has Toyota done they've really stepped up their game in the luxury market give you power running boards now this is awesome i don't believe we've ever seen that on a tundra before and then down here you'll have your capstone badge with a big chrome line that continues along the doors now i really like the design and the styling of the profile of this truck i think it looks really good even here at the gas cap there's a little design implementation of this kind of upper fender flare on the bed and that slides right into the gas cap. They didn't need to do that, but it's a cool little attention to detail thing. And then as we move to the rear, 
boy, there is a lot to talk about back here. Let's start with ways to open the tailgate. So number one, let's say you have a bunch of stuff in your hands and you can't get underneath the latch right there where the button is. You can hit this button on the side. That'll open up the tailgate. So that's one way. And then the second way that you can do it, this, this is becoming more standard, you can hold this button on the key fob that will also drop the tailgate. Fortunately, it does not lift the tailgate. That is something that I personally don't need from a truck, but some of the competitors do have that. Then the last way is uh, right underneath here, there is a button. Uh, there's also a puddle light and a backup camera here. You can tap that, and that is the more traditional way to open up your tailgate. And as you may have noticed, every time I am opening the tailgate, is it is extending this little step from underneath the bumper, which is very nice, a cool addition. And stepping up here into the bed, you have a lot of functionality. There's some tie downs right here that can move, LED lights, and you do get an AC 120 volt outlet back here. And this is a composite bed, um, which is really nice, though it looks like they have a spray on bed liner on top of it. So composite is designed so that it won't rust and it's very sturdy and uh, it works great. I have a 2019 Tacoma. I use my bed all the time and it has really held up super well. And so it will definitely continue to hold up uh, in a vehicle like this Tundra. Then right here you have two cameras. One of those is for the rear view mirror camera in there. We'll talk about that when we get to the interior. And the other is for a bed cam. So, well, I'll just show you. I was, gonna, I was just gonna do this, which is basically what the, what the camera sees. So if you have stuff moving around in your bed, you can check it while you're driving, make sure nothing is loose. Um, but I'll show you that when we move to the cameras on the interior. Stepping down here, one thing I do wanna talk about that is a little bit of an issue is it's nice that this has a step, as you'll see it retracts back in, but lower trims of the Tundra do not include this power step. There's a manual version you can get, but that's not a factory option. You have to add that on additionally, um, I believe at a dealership, uh, though you might be able to check that box online, it doesn't come standard is my point. And you might say, well, that's fine. I don't need a little fold out uh, step, but if the tailgate is down, that blocks out the step right here and there's not like an easy way to get up. There's not like a cutout right here. And a lot of people have complained, this is kind of difficult to get up into my bed if I'm loading stuff in because there's not a convenient place right here. Now that's something that Toyota could very easily remedy in the future. So I'm not worried too much. I imagine this is gonna become a moot point on future Tundras. Toyota is very good at listening to the consumer. Moving down here, you will have your tow hitch with parking sensors right there. Pretty good towing capacity on this thing. And without further ado, let's move to the interior. Moving to the interior of the $80,000 Toyota Tundra capstone, it finally feels like it can run with the big dogs. Up until now, the Tundra has felt like it was behind. That's because it was. It hadn't been fully updated in years. And now with this new update, it is incredible. I mean, the material quality is excellent. The features are so cool and they compete really well with the other big three trucks. Let me show you what I mean. Starting here with the door panel, this is soft touch. This is soft touch. You'll get your uh, window controls here, power mirror buttons. Then you'll have your seat controls here. If you want your memory settings, that's kind of on the wood right there. There's a better view of that. Cool chrome speaker, cup holders, and some storage. These, of course, are power operated seats. They do have power lumbar too. And then down here, you get a power operated steering wheel for the adjustments and then you do have a button to turn off your running boards if you don't want them to fold out with the door or you could keep them out permanently heated steering wheel button for your bed power outlet lighting controls some brightness stuff and then this is your sensor uh, the rear sensors 
for the truck if you want to turn those off. And then moving up here, you do have a driver's side grab handle, which is awesome. Little leatherette material right there. That's really neat. And that cool attention to detail continues throughout the entirety of this interior. Moving to the steering wheel though, it is very comfortable and you do have a lot of buttons on here. Those control your center fully digital gauge cluster screen. That is just so cool to see. There's quite a lot that you can do here. Definitely a lot of settings to mess with. Pulling back out here, you do have volume, Bluetooth, and if you want to mess with some trailer settings, you can spin this and going back into your gauge cluster, you'll see comfort, eco, normal, sport, and if we tap tow haul, you can actually switch between tow and tow plus in here. So there is a ton of functionality in that fully digital display. So that's cool to see. And as we continue over here to the infotainment system, it is very spiffy, very quick. Uh, it operates really well. Of course, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Those are some highlight features. Another highlight is that throwing it into reverse, you get really crisp cameras. The Toyota Tacoma for 2023 uh, and the 2022 model um, have a full 360 degree system, but they are just garbage cameras. Now, hopefully the new Tacoma will have much better cameras like this Tundra, and it's just so nice to see here. So, of course, you get a standard backup camera with guiding lines that turn uh, with the steering wheel. Then you'll have the top-down view. You can do just the front view if you want. You can do just the mirrors if you want. There is your aforementioned bed cam. Who did it better, me or the actual camera? vote in the comment section below. Um, there are just so many different views uh, that you can do here uh, in the truck and I just think it's so, so neat. Um, definitely a step up from the outgoing truck, just like so cool and I'm just so glad to have that functionality. Down here there's a button, you can do this kind of full digital view of the truck as well and the surroundings. I think that's neat. That can be useful for parking as well. Um, and you can do like the interior view too. So you can kind of see inside of the truck, which is very strange. It's kind of a cool design, but um, just wanted to point that out, bringing us back to the regular screen. Uh, we're gonna move a little lower below the screen. You'll have your climate controls right there. You do get a physical volume knob, which is nice. Heated and cooled seats. Always love to see that. And, oop, turn that down. Those, those things are booting up like an old PC. The seats were about to go. Anyway, uh, continuing down here, you do get uh, your trailer backup assist right there, and then uh, traction control off, giant hazards button, and then this truck does have air suspension, so you can raise and lower it from in here. Doesn't have it from the key fob like the Ram does. I, that just blows my mind that the Ram has it from the key fob, but it's still really cool to see the air suspension in here. You'll also get wireless charging, and then auto hold and the electronic parking brake trailer brake assist right here and your power button right there because this is uh, keyless uh, start, push button start, and then a uh, pretty standard shifter. Like that it's standard, it's not a dial or anything crazy, it's just simple. Toyota knows what their audience wants. And then in here you get two cup holders and you'll have that aforementioned drive mode selector and uh, tow haul mode. Then here is your four wheel drive selection, you push that down and you shift this little button, and then you get a big armrest with some storage right here, but that actually um, opens up to reveal even more storage, USB and USB-C right there, and you can open up this little part right here as well, so that's nice. Um, you can open this from both sides, it does have a button right there for both, so that is cool. And then moving over here, you do have just like super premium seats. I've been sitting in them, you can see the little key down there. Um, I've been sitting in them for a while and they are so comfy, even without any of the heating or ventilation going on right now. 
Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here, which I think is really cool, is capstone is like illuminated on the dashboard right there. It lights up at nighttime. I think that's a nice little touch uh, for the luxury segment. And then moving up here, you do have buttons to open up your rear window so I can bring the whole thing down right there. There we go, let's adjust that. And then you can see, wow, like just, isn't that so cool the whole window goes down. And then, da, 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 there is a full pano moonroof. Finally, the Tundra has not had this before. And again, just another reason that this really feels like it finally has caught up with its competitors um, in the luxury truck market. It, feels like it has all the features that you could get on a Ram, that you could get on an F-150, and it doesn't feel like it's skimping in any way. Last thing I want to talk about up here is you get your regular mirror, boop, turns into a camera. Speaking of features that the competitors have that I wish other Toyotas did, and now we have it here. Moving to the rear seats of the Tundra Capstone, the first thing I want to talk about is if we pull this latch and we lift the seats up, kind of hard to do with one hand, you can see there's actually no under the seat storage. That's because the hybrid battery is back here. It does give you a more flush load floor kind of option if you fold these up, if you don't want to get the seats dirty, but there isn't really anything to store down there but that's okay because as we step inside you can see there is a ton of legroom i probably have six maybe seven inches of legroom and a good two or three inches of headroom back here so definitely very comfortable on longer road trips adding to that comfort is the fact that this gets heated and cooled seats back here finally uh the tundra has cooled rear seats. I don't even know if the Tundra's ever had heated rear seats either, but finally it does, and that is such a neat detail. You'll get USB, USB-C back here, and you'll get an AC 120 volt outlet. So that is always good to see. Air vents, very, very premium. Little fold down armrest with two cup holders additionally. If you want just even more cup holders, you can have that here, and you'll get some storage as well as a little vent shade right there. So that's cool to see that you get the little vent shade. Don't see that too often on pickup trucks. And you even get rear grab handles with that little leatherette trim as well. Good view of the panoramic moonroof here. Uh, and overall, very, very comfortable. Let's take this thing for a spin. All right, driving the new Toyota Tundra, being completely transparent with you guys, I just did the entire driving segment and realized that my mic wasn't on. Whoops. I've done that before and I get all the way home and sometimes I just dub it, um, but I was still driving the truck when I realized that uh, my mic wasn't on, so I figured, <laughs> okay, we're gonna re-record all this. But uh, good news, the truck drives great. It really does handle quite well. And the iForce Max engine is not a hybrid designed for fuel economy savings. It's more of a hybrid that's designed for power. And power does this have. I mean, it really does get up to speed quite well. It accelerates very quickly. There's not a lot of uh, lag in that acceleration when you go pedal to the floor. And it corners very nicely. Uh, the steering is super comfortable and like I said throughout the video it feels like it can compete with the big three well like it finally feels like it's an option that normal consumers would consider well I guess if you're looking at an $80,000 truck you're not exactly a normal consumer but you know what I mean um, that that people who are looking for this type of vehicle would actually consider a Tundra. Because I think up until now, the Tundra really hasn't been on many people's radar. But it finally is up to date with all the other trucks. It has all the amazing, cool, fun features that they have. And it's a Toyota. So you get that additional benefit of the Toyota reliability and build quality. And that is something that's been sorely lacking, I think, in the luxury truck market is 
the Toyota, you know, and it's finally here, and I think that's awesome. It's definitely a truck that I would consider if you're looking for a full-sized luxury truck. Well, that is just about going to wrap up my review of the Tundra Capstone. What a massive leap forward for the Tundra. They've needed to do that for a while. Thank you guys so much for watching, but before I go, I'd like to mention that I am a Christian, and if you have any prayer requests, I would love to be able to pray for you guys. You can leave those in the comment section below. And lastly, I always like to close out my videos with a weekly scriptural reading. This week, I'm in 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. I love that verse because it encourages believers to um, know why they're Christians. I think a lot of people are raised in the church, but they don't really know why they do it. They're like, well, my, my parents raised me in that, so I, I guess I'm a Christian. I accepted Jesus. But they don't really know what that means. And a lot of people have preconceived notions, especially nowadays, about what Christianity is. And they go, isn't this X, Y, Z, one, two, three? Don't you believe this? And a lot of those preconceived notions are incorrect, or they're only half the truth. But many believers don't know where verses are that counteract those preconceived notions. And so I always encourage people to know your Bible, read your Bible, look up the context for verses, because that's really important when we're defending our faith. And if you're not a Christian, I also encourage you to look up Scripture, because maybe you say, well, that, that's not true, or I believe the Bible is this, or, or you guys think that way. Well, I would encourage you to look up what the Bible actually says because that is the ultimate source of hope in the truth of Christianity. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I'll see you next time. Take care.